everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jets. We have a bevy of news stories for you today. A diluge, the wall is breaking. We're about to flood your brain, your eyeballs with a whole bunch of stuff because we have news on new Zelda games. We have news on Fire Emblem. We have news on game sales and oh, Nintendo is being Nintendo and making absolutely silly, arguably asinine arguments for a Joy-Con lawsuit, Joy-Con drift lawsuit, and why certain people can't actually sue them because they can't be possibly affected by Joy-Con drift. Because, you know, Joy-Con drift is nothing but a dream. <sighs> okay, anyways, so moving on. Sorry, had to quote a little Nelly there. Now, before we get into the news, I gotta remind you that, hey, if you're brand new here, why don't you hit the subscribe button, maybe drop a like and leave a comment, and maybe maybe hit that bell icon. You know, it, not just because you're really enjoying the, the content, enjoying the stuff, timestamps down below to jump to any new story you want, but also because, hey, you know what, we have this big gaming event happening in June called Prime Gaming Fest. Gonna be thousands of dollars worth of giveaways, hundreds of winners. You know, you're gonna want to have your, no your notification set so you can actually, you know, be told when it's gonna happen because YouTube kind of sucks at, you know, actually reminding you guys that new content coming out. Now, that being said, let's get into our first story and we're starting with some gain sales. So we talked about some sales stuff yesterday, a link to that video down below if you want to check out some of the eShop sales going on. But these are sales actually with physical games and this is really exciting because one game in particular huh, is the cheapest it's ever been and is a really, really amazing game on Switch and it actually was published by Nintendo. We're talking about Age of Calamity. So Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity came out back in 2019 and hasn't really had any major price drop since until now. So if you live in the United States, Best Buy has it on its deal of the week for $29.99. And we have an affiliate link down in the description if you would like to go buy the game. It's the cheapest it's ever been. I had a lot of fun with this. It does have story elements that could potentially pertain to Breath of the Wild 2, depending on how things play out. Uh, so it's gonna be really interesting. It was advertised as an official prequel to Breath of the Wild. People debate whether it is or not. It doesn't really matter. It's $29.99. If you haven't played it yet and you were waiting for a price drop, this is the time to jump in. And yes, if you use that affiliate link down in the description. Hey, you know, it actually does a little kickback to the channel, so thanks. Although you don't have to buy games you don't like. That being said, uh, we actually have more game sales than that. The rest of these coming from Amazon, who actually started a buy two, get one free. So not BOGO, so not buy one, get one, but buy two games, get one free deal. But it's not on every game, it's only a selection of games. And let's just go over some of those games right now. So among those games, we have Elden Ring for basically any platform, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Minecraft specifically for Switch, Halo Infinite, Ghostwire Tokyo, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, we're obviously talking about the one on Switch, uh, Assassin's Creed Ezio Collection for Switch, Forza Horizon 5, Monster Hunter Rise, Minecraft Dungeons, Tiny Tina's Wonderland on basically any platform, Rune Factory 5 and Rune Factory 4, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Shin Megami Tensei 5, and so many more. This is obviously a really great time to buy these games if you're actually looking to get physical copies of games. So between Age of Calamity and Best Buy, all of these games at at least Amazon US, really exciting times to just get games for cheap. And I always like to share the best gaming deals with you guys when they come across my table. Next up, we have a PlayStation 5 launch game seemingly confirmed to be coming to Nintendo Switch thanks to an ESRB ratings leak. Now, these ratings leaks are always actually, they're less leaks, they're more just hey, the ESRB has to post these ratings publicly, it's required by law, and because of that we discover games sometimes coming out before they're announced. And in this case, a PlayStation 5 launch game happens to be coming to Switch, likely soon within the next few months. And that game is Pathless. Now, if you don't know what Pathless is, it is an indie game, but oh my god, does it look incredible. It has a lot of really quick travel elements to it. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yeah, if you fight bosses in the game, which you should because that's actually a requirement of the game, there are many instances of these boss fights that feel exactly like you're fighting a boss from the Legend of Zelda franchise obviously created its appeal. It did get a 77 plus on Metacritic, has several you know reviews in the eights and some in the nines. This is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a high quality game. Now, did get you a little bit with <laughs> just a smidge of clickbait there. It actually was a PlayStation 4 game as well, uh, but it did launch on PlayStation 5. It was a launch game, uh, and it just happened to launch cross-platform at that time. But still, it's great to, anytime we can get one of these higher quality indie games over on Switch, and I wanted to draw some attention to it because I think Pathless is good enough 
or I should say that good to deserve this attention. So why don't you go ahead and, you know, maybe just kind of bookmark that in your brain to look for that game landing on the eShop sometime in the next few months. Next up, we get to talk about Fire Emblem Warriors. Three Hopes. That is the brand new Fire Emblem game coming this year. Maybe we'll have more Fire Emblem this year. We don't know yet, but this is one that was announced and confirmed and comes out on June 24th, 2022. In fact, we'll put a link down in the description if you'd like to pre-order this game. But that, setting that aside, um, we actually have some news here that's potential news. We're, we're going to call this a rumor uh, because of where it comes from. We're talking about our Good old pal Samus Hunter over on Twitter, and here's what she had to say uh, about the news coming for this game this month. More Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes news and videos are coming in April. More information on the Lord's Trio, including Elder Guard, Dimitri, Claude, and new characters will be announced. The gameplay will be more similar to Fire Emblem Warriors with more RPG and strategic elements than Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Samus Hunter does continue by noting that at the start of the game, players will notice a key difference in the story which is how and why Byleth is with all three lords. Adding to this, they claim the monastery is a bit different. You can still both talk and teach student battalions as part of the game, and supports and parrot mechanics will also be back. That's not all. Samus Hunter also relays word that the moveset of characters is mostly tied to their class. However, some characters have a unique class. Meanwhile, the game is set to mostly replicate the level up, skills, crest, and weapon system seen in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Between each story chapter, you could take on activity, side quests, and battle similar to one present in Three Houses. To get rare items and weapons, for example, a battle that granted a unique weapon in Three Houses could have very similar quests in Three Hopes. So, yeah, obviously this is really exciting info, and, you know, some people always debate whether or not we should cover some of these Twitter leakers out there, but, yeah, Samus Hunter has a fairly solid reputation at these sorts of leaks, so we're just gonna, you know, label this with the rumor tag, throw that salt over your shoulder, and enjoy. Next up, we're going to be actually talking about what Zelda games are going to be coming this year because we have some rumors around this and some of these rumors date back to the last year but we have some new confirmations now plus some information I have received behind the scenes and before I talk about that we have to say hey look there's been a Zelda game basically every year of Switch right 2017 we had Breath of the Wild 2018 we had Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition 2019 we ended up with Link's Awakening Remake 2020 at Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity the prequel to Breath of the Wild and then 2021 had Skyward Sword HD and then obviously we know Breath of the Wild 2 was slated for this year, but now that that's pushed to 2023 and is probably the Zelda game for 2023, we are left wondering what the hell are we getting this year? And there's been a lot of assumptions. It'll be either the Wind Waker HD or Twilight Princess HD, which makes sense because those were rumored last year. Jeff Grubb said, hey, you know, that could happen this year. And Jeff Grubb is obviously fairly reliable. But you know what? We actually have some more you know, looks at this and thoughts on this. First, a rumor from Samus Hunter where she notes, the delay of the sequel of Breath of the Wild to Spring 2023 is a bit unfortunate, but you know, they have backup plans for other Zelda titles, which, again, she doesn't reference what those titles will be. Well, I've actually heard from some birdies that are tweeting all around me, you know, and we're not talking about Twitter birdies, there's some, just, just some little conversations happening from some people that I trust, but don't trust enough to say this is a verified fact, so I am going to put this in the rumor territory that we are indeed going to be getting new Zelda games this year. Now, what those Zelda games are there's been some hints but I, I nothing that i can say is verifiable again the wind waker or twilight princess seems very likely if not both but you know again i'm just hearing hints of this out there whiffs in the air something zelda is happening in 2022 i don't know what it is but that is the rumor that is what i believe and i just wanted to throw it out there you guys let me know what zelda thing you want to happen if not the wind waker or twilight princess what about some oracle remakes what about Phantom Hourglass or Spirit Tracks coming back? I have no idea. The Minish Cap? The Minish Cap? Could it be the Minish Cap? Could it be Ocarina of Time in HD? I have no idea. You guys let me know what Zelda game you hope drops this year because it's probably going to be a remake. Or, heck, what if it's a top-down Zelda game that they've been working on since 2019 because those don't take as long? I have no idea. You guys let me know what you would like to see down in the comments below. Now, our last story deals with a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con Drift lawsuit. There's actually several of these suits happening right now several class action and more because joy-con drift has been a fundamental problem with switch for years and while nintendo has 
sort of denied it. They've also sort of admitted to it. They've said they've made it better. They said they'll fix all of our Joy-Cons for free, even outside of warranty, but they never really outright say, hey, you know what? Joy-Con drift is a massive problem on Switch, bigger than any other system. All they've ever admitted is that, hey, you know what? Drift is something that happens on every controller and is inevitable. That's not really admittance that there's an extra issue with Switch, which there clearly is, because whether it's the Pro Controller or the Joy-Cons, all of them seem to drift more frequently than any other controller from other competitors. So, what's happening with this lawsuit? Well, Nintendo's now arguing that this lawsuit is invalid. Why? Because children are not allowed to sue Nintendo because they cannot agree to the end user license agreement, and thus the mothers, who are the ones actually in the lawsuit, are invalid and the judge actually agrees with this defense, although that's not where it ends because it's being appealed at the federal level. Let's actually get into the details of this. So according to a report from Axios, Nintendo lawyers have recently argued in a case, Sanchez et al. versus Nintendo of America, that certain individuals suing the company have no standing because the ones affected by the Joy-Con drift issues are children. Essentially, Nintendo has claimed that children cannot sue the company because they allege no cognizable harm to themselves. So they can't be aware of any harm to themselves because of drift, which is really strange. In addition, Nintendo's defense cited that the end user license agreement, the EULA, that Switch users must acknowledge before even using the system states that they must be over the age of 18 to accept. At this point in time, an arbitrator has actually ruled in favor of Nintendo's defense and claimed that the two mothers representing the children in question cannot proceed with a class action suit. The lawyers representing these plaintiffs have pushed back on this ruling though and have pushed for a federal judge to examine the case. Now, obviously what's interesting here is Nintendo arguing that children can't sue them because children can't agree to the end user's license agreement. Of course, I think loss in all of this is that the children didn't buy the system, the parents did. The parents are responsible for their children. They're responsible for the product. As an example, if you fire, file a warranty claim for the Switch, the child's not gonna be the one filing the warranty claim. The parent is, and also Nintendo pushes parental control apps for parents to set up the child's account and agree on the child's behalf. So this is what I find very interesting here is that Nintendo's argument is basically the children cannot you know, complain about Joy-Con Drift because they can't recognize what Drift even is because they're too young to understand because they're kids. And because they're under 18, they couldn't agree to the end user license agreement in the first place, which is really funny because the end user license agreement has nothing to do with this except for the fact that the end user license agreement does state that you cannot sue Nintendo. Here's the problem though, if they can't agree to it and there is Drift happening, what does this have to do with anything? That kind of means the end user license agreement is thrown in the trash and that still should be able to proceed forward. But the judge obviously in this case disagreed and said hey look Nintendo's right children can't sue mothers can't sue on the behalf of the children even though the mothers are probably the ones that bought the switch and set it up and might even have parental controls and even set up the child account in the first place and made the agreement on the behalf of the child so it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens with this case because this could be something uh, moving forward where a lot of people involved in these cases do happen to be children, but not everyone. There are actual adults in some of these class action lawsuits, but this is just one way Nintendo's like, hey look, we're not even at this point gonna deny that Joy-Con Drift exists. Forget that argument. We're gonna argue you can't sue us in the first place. Why? Because children can't agree to even use the Switch in the first place. So if children can't agree to use the Switch, children shouldn't be able to sue us because yeah, they aren't supposed to be using the Switch. So I'll say this, I'll say this for Nintendo's legal argument here. Look, if you're someone out there that always says Nintendo is for kids, Nintendo Switch is for kids, according to Nintendo of America, you have to be 18 or older to use the Switch. So, is it for kids then? Nintendo of America just told you no. Our platform's not for kids, so kids can't sue us. What a great argument, so guess what guys? All you people, all you Switch haters out there talking about how it's for kids, Nintendo of America just told you, sorry, it's actually for adults. You gotta be 18 or older to use our system. The parental control app, be damned. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways, whatever, I, th this is what happens in the 
legal uh, way of doing things. There's so many loopholes to jump through. That's why I don't know if anything's gonna ever come from these class actions. And if they do, it's gonna happen a decade from now. And uh, you know, hundreds of people are gonna get a check in the mail for $5. Uh, you know, it kind of makes you wonder if it's even worth doing this. I understand the whole point of these lawsuits is not just to recoup some costs for buying the system or buying extra Joy-Cons, but also to hold the company accountable. Unfortunately, in a lot of class action lawsuits, they take so long, the company's already moved on and never actually got held accountable while the, the whatever they were suing over is still relevant. So in the end, the only people that really make money on this end up being the lawyers because they get a fee on the overall uh, fee from, you know, Nintendo. Let's say Nintendo loses and they got to pay $100 million. The lawyers might get like five mil of that. The rest gets spread out among thousands of people and it ends up being really small amounts. And nobody really ends up happy except the lawyer. So I don't know. I think uh, Nintendo's being a little bit scummy here but they're doing what their legal team is supposed to do, and that is find any possible loophole for Nintendo to win. And right now, they are winning. So, anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully, you got found this video informative. You learned a bunch of great stories this morning. And, uh, yeah, you can just get a nice rest of your day. Smile. Let people know uh, that, hey, you care about them. Call your mothers and your parents and your brothers and sisters and even your children and let them know how much you love them because every day is precious. You guys have a beautiful rest of your day.